Okay, so if you watched one of the previous videos where I've just gone over some bunch of adapters and stuff I got on eBay, which is a daily basis, <laughs> but uh, I was mainly asking about that connector that I found out is a, a BNC C-type connector, but I, I showed this as well, and it, it's not that I didn't know what it was, it's that I've just never seen one like this. Now, I've seen the adjustable collar style of a sampling port before, and that's what this is. Um, I've just never seen one set up like this. All the ones I've I've usually seen, it's a T connector. So you'll have an input, an output, and then the sample port is attached to it permanently. And you adjust it for you know however much output you want out of it. I've just never seen one like this. So, but I've already had uh, a bunch of people ask me questions about uh, sample ports. You know, they don't know anything about them. Now I have a bunch of them. I I have a bunch of those T styles. I just never use them personally. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll reply to people and tell them I've got them, I don't use them, I use uh, attenuators. Um, and, of course, that brings up another conversation. Well, why do you use attenuators and not sampling ports? Well, the big difference, they both achieve the same thing. It allows you to couple something that has high power to something like a spectrum analyzer up there that has a very low level uh, input or can only take a very low level of input. Now that spectrum analyzer can take, I think it's 20 dBm, uh, or minus 20 dB, yeah. Uh, oh, hell, I gotta over here and look at it. Yeah, positive 20 dBm. So that can take up to positive 20 dBm at the input. And you definitely do not want to damage the input <laughs> on a spectrum analyzer, or even an oscilloscope for that matter, or any other piece of test equipment. So you need you need to somehow lower the level, like in the case of a radio, and this is an old grimy, grungy looking Cobra 138 XLR, works just fine, um, and I'm going to be using this for the demonstration because I just happen to have it sitting out before it gets put away. Um, but let's say you want to sample the output of this. Now you can't hook the rate, now the spectrum analyzer is 50 ohms, it's terminated in 50 ohms. So, you know, if the input of that spectrum analyzer could handle several watts of power, I could connect a coax cable directly from the radio to the spectrum analyzer. It would then become the dummy load. But it doesn't have that, that high of an input, you know, it can't handle that large of an input. So we need to lower that down. Now, I use attenuators. Now, the reason I use attenuators instead of sample ports is because I want to be able to take quantitative measurements. Uh, and the reason I want to be able to do that is I actually want to be able to do just that, take a measurement. I can't take a, measure, a meaningful measurement using something that's not calibrated. So, now here's just a small one. Now, when I'm doing radios and amplifiers, I have a 500 and 1,000 watt uh, attenuators. They're basically just like this. They're just really big. If you've ever seen the big dummy loads, they look just like that. The only difference is they have a coax connector on the front and another one on the back. So a dummy load is just that. It's a load. It has an input, goes into a 50 ohm, or a big stack of 50 ohm, or a bunch of resistors inside that equal 50 ohms, and it burns off all your RF energy as heat. An attenuator, on the other hand, allows the signal to pass through but it burns up some of that energy inside. There are resistors in here, but they're not the dummy load. They're just in there to basically bleed off some of that signal. So these are the same thing. They have, you know, what, and you can get them in different styles with, uh, you know, UHF style connectors. Most of the ones I'm, I'm using are either going to be, usually they're all N-type, but I have them in SMA connectors, UHF connectors. So you can get them in, you know, like here I have this set up, you know, an adapter so I can switch it over to BNC but uh, the thing is I know how much attenuation this applies 10 dB so whatever comes in here is going to be exactly 10 dB less at the output so then on my spectrum analyzer up here when I turn that on I can set what's called the reference offset and when I I set the so if I was using this attenuator right here at 10 dB, I'd set my reference offset level at 10 dB. So it it ca basically calculates then everything, all the measurements I take with that spectrum analyzer, are then the actual output power of the radio. Because 
it can calculate or it can it can do the math internally to make up for that attenuator. So when I have my my large 500 and thousand watt attenuators in line in series, I just put in 61 dB because uh, I figured it out all the between the coax cables between the rate basically the radio and going into one of those attenuators, the coax cable coming out, going into the other attenuator, coming out of that, up through the back side of the bench, through the last coax cable, and going into the spectrum analyzer, it's actually 61.1 dBm. So when I turn that on, I just hit reference offset, 61 dBm. And then when I key a microphone on a radio, it'll give me the actual power that the radio is putting out, because it's making up for that, but the, the radio is actually terminated then in the spectrum analyzer. Now, for a lot of people, you don't need to take quantitative measurements. You're just, you basically want a monitor. So you want to monitor, let's say, your modulation, you know, on, the, on your transmissions. You don't really need to take accurate measurements. You just want to see if you're distorted or not. So you're basically, maybe you're using an oscilloscope. You just need a sample of that. Or even with a spectrum analyzer, it's perfectly fine. You won't be taking quantitative, you know, accurate measurements for amplitude. But you want to see harmonic energy, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. These are perfectly fine for that. And as I covered in that one, what these do is it's a little sliding collar. So you have a contact pin right here. So this hooks up to you know your antenna or into a T connector. And then the power comes up. Let me screw this back together. And then this outer ring is attached to the center contact here. But everything's isolated. You see there's no metal in the middle. That's Teflon. And then down inside, it's not attached to the outside either. There's a Teflon sleeve on the inside that runs, runs through there. So the center contact's completely isolated. It only makes contact here and nowhere else. So it's just whatever energy is being radiated off of that metal in there into the coax cable you hook up to hook up to a piece of test equipment. So... Let's actually hook this thing up. So I'm going to pause the video, and what I'm what I'm doing is, is I'm hooking it up to the back side of this radio. I already have a T connector installed. This goes out to a dummy load, and we're going to install this right here, and then I'll hook up a coax cable. So let me pause the video. Okay, so now it's connected. So that's all I've done is installed that in that T connector now, and I have a coax cable that comes up, and that goes into directly into the spectrum analyzer. So there's no attenuators in line. Now, if you watch, now with this little sliding, what I call a slide, it's not sliding, it's, you know, it's rotating, but like I say, it's independent. So this coax cable is not actually connected down here. It's separated by an insulator, and it's just whatever RF energy is being radiated, and then basically the tip inside this connector is basically acting as a little antenna and picking it up. But that's your sample. So if you watch as I rotate this collar, I'll key the microphone. So if I've got it the whole way in, and I actually set that to watts, I have to pan up just a little bit more. You can see, oh, let's see here. So that's 1.07 milliwatts. Or, get the DBM. 0.25 dBm. Now, like I say, the problem is that's not what's actually coming out of this radio. So that's where I say you don't know exactly what the attenuation is on this thing, so you can't take any accurate measurements as far as amplitude. But as I rotate this, you'll see... Ah, camera's come down a little bit. Back up some. There you go. So you'll see as I rotate this, and you'll see this part's coming out farther and farther... You, if you watch the amplitude there, it's going to start dropping and dropping and dropping. Because basically our little, like I say, the, the tip inside of this connector on the end here is basically acting as an antenna. And what's happening is, as it comes out farther, it's getting farther and farther away from the source down here. So it's picking up less and less and less. And the signal just keeps going down, down, down. So we're at minus 66.8 dBm. So this has, what, about 60, because it was right around zero point something. So that's about 66, 67 dBm of attenuation, basically. Get 
it spun the whole way the other direction. Yeah, so there's 0 0.4, 0 0.5 dBm. So about 66.5 dBm of attenuation, basically, is, is basically what that's acting as. Well, like I said, it's perfectly fine for hooking up to stuff like that where you don't need to take amplitude measurements, or if you want to hook it up to an oscilloscope, view your modulation package. That's really, that's all you need. So, like I said, I hope that explains a little bit what they do, how they work, how you connect them. Um, like I say, me personally, I use actual attenuators. The problem is, once you get now for a radio like this, you don't need a huge attenuator. But once you start getting up in power, because this one here is rated for, now this one's only a one watt. Um, I don't think I even have any of those out on the bench because I use them so rarely. I've got some, uh, what do we got here? This one's a five watt attenuator. It's a 20 dBm. It's actually, the part numbers on a lot of these things are usually the, a lot of the specs. So this one's 20 dBm and can handle 5 watts. So you could use this on this radio down here. You just hook this up in line and it applies 20 dBm of attenuation. Uh, now, of course, I'm testing amplifiers. I can easily get up over 1,000 watts a lot of times, so that's why I have these really large attenuators. But like I say, I can hook them up. I can hook up uh, 2,000 watt attenuators and a 500 watt in series if I want, because I have two, two 1,000 watt 30 dBm's and three uh, 500 watt 30 dBm attenuators, and then I have a bunch of smaller ones. I've got 25s, uh, tens, you know, a lot of these fives and one watt ones, and I have some that are even a little smaller than this. But I can come up with whatever combination I need, so I can hook up a thousand or two thousand watt amplifier and hook it directly to the spectrum analyzer. And basically the spectrum analyzer, like I say, is the dummy load. But by the time the signal's gone through all of those attenuators, there's almost no power at that at the end of the cable. But uh, there you go. There's the difference of between an attenuator and a, uh, a non-contact, which is what I would call this, a non-contact RF sampling port, because it's separated by an air gap. There's no physical connection between the center conductor in this wire and the center conductor down here coming out to the radio. It's just, like I say, it kind of acts as an antenna. The, the trans transmits down here, and the, the center pin in this coax connector here is basically acting as an antenna and just picking up that stray RF energy. But they work perfectly fine. So there, I hope that explains, explains these a little bit better and how they're used.